Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we are going to discuss about bias theorem. This was one of the most requested video by many of my subscribers. And guys, uh, again, this particular video will be divided into two parts. In this particular part, we'll try to see how do we derive bias theorem. And then in the next part, we'll also be discussing about naive bias classifier, where this particular theorem is extensively used. Okay, so in this particular video, we are first of all going to discuss about conditional probability. Then we are going to discuss about independent events, dependent events. And then I'm going to share, say you an example. And this is basically the formula of conditional probability. You know, I will try to understand what this particular equation is because based on this particular equation only, we will be able to derive bias theorem. Okay, so let us go ahead and try to understand first of all these two topics that is independent events and dependent events. Now what are independent and dependent events? Just try to understand guys. If I take an example of tossing two coins independently, suppose one coin if I'm tossing it and suppose it, it the different types of values it usually gets is heads or tail. So usually the probability is somewhere around for head is somewhere around 1 by 2 you know 0.5 and 0.5 right for heads and tail. And now you can see that if I'm tossing two coins, right, both the output are independent to each other. They are not dependent to each other, right? So there we basically consider this as an independent events. And now we will also be discussing about dependent events. Let me take a very beautiful example. Suppose over here in, in a bag, I have some marbles. I have red and black color marbles and the total number of marbles that I have is five. Okay. Now understand one thing, guys. Suppose these are my total number of marbles in my bag. You can see there are three reds and two blacks. Now in the first event, suppose if I pick up one black marble, what will happen? What will be the probability of getting this black marble, black colored marble? It will be somewhere around two by five, right? So the probability of getting a black marble will be two by five. Why two by five? The total number of marbles are five. And you can see that out of two, right, these two black marbles are there. So I can basically write two by five. So this will be the probability in the first event of taking out the specific marble. Now in the next event, suppose if I go back to the next event, in the next event, again, if I want to pick up one marble out of this four, because one black marble has already been picked up, right? Now out of this four, if I try to pick up one more black marble, then what will be the probability, right? Now this is just like an independent events, right? Over here, one one event is there we have actually picked up a marble then again in the second event from the remaining marble we are actually picking it up then the probability will be changing okay it will not be the same as, as we saw in that independent uh, events where the uh, where the probability was 0.5 right but in this case the probability keeps on changes because the number of marble is becoming less right this was one example of dependent events right now let us go ahead and try to understand what exactly is conditional probability now conditional probability is basically given by the formula probability of A given B. Okay, we will try to read this given B. Okay, and this is basically given by probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B. Okay, we will try to understand this. Understand guys A and B are two events. Event 1 and event 2. Okay, now let me just consider this same example. Okay, suppose I want to find out how what will be the probability of taking two marbles continuously one event after the other okay so suppose in event a in event a i have picked up one marble okay and this particular marble is of black color okay so when i pick up one marble the probability of this black color is basically two by five right right now <clears throat> in the second event Again, we, are, we want to find out what will be the probability if I take out one more black marble from here. Okay, so I'm taking out one more black marble from my bag. So what will be the probability that I will basically be given, getting? So for this, we can actually indicate this types of equation. So we will be saying probability of B, that is the second black marble, which is my second event, given already A event is performed right this is my a event understand this guys this is my a event this is my b event okay in the a event i have already took out one black marble okay so i will basically write probability of b given a event has already taken place now for this we basically get a value 1 by 4 
right? 1 by 4. Here you can see, right? In the first event, the probability of A is nothing but 2 by 5. In the next event, if I want to again pick up this black marble, the probability will be nothing but 1 by 4 because one black marble is there and total number of marbles are 4, right? Now, when we are considering this, when we are actually considering this, right? If I try to multiply both this, right? So, if I try to multiply 2 by 5 and 1 by 4, I will be getting somewhere around 1 by 10. Now, what exactly is 1 by 10? 1 by 10 basically says that what is the probability of both A and B event taking place? And that can be only told after this particular event has taken place. So, over here we are combining this particular probability 2 by 5 multiplied by 1 by 4 and we are getting it 1 by 10. Right? Now, just understand guys, if I consider this equation and if I consider all these things that we have done, is it matching or not? How I am saying it is matching or not? Just consider that I will write probability of B slash A. This basically says that what is the probability of the B event considering or given A event that basically means A event has already happened. Right? So, probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B. Right? We know probability of A intersection B is what? 1 by 10 and divided by what is probability of B? 2 by 5. Right? Now, if I take this down, this will nothing be, it will become 1 by 4. Now, here you can see that probability of B by A, the probability that I got is 1 by 4. Right? So, this is amazing. You can see that based on this conditional probability, you need to understand. I'll tell you the exact application of conditional probability just in a while. But just understand that what does conditional probability say? It says that you are trying to find out the probability of an event given this particular event has already taken place. Right? So, this is a kind of dependent events. It is not independent, it is dependent. Always remember in this particular way. And I had actually shown you this particular marble problem. I had also defined or find out some of the values. So, this was just an example. Okay? Now, how this conditional probability is useful for deriving Bayes theorem, we will try to understand. Now, guys, we will try to take this particular conditional probability and we will try to derive this Bayes theorem. Now, just understand over here. Suppose if I say that I want to find out the probability of the event A considering B is already given, right? Or B is already happened. This particular event has already happened. So, for this, we can basically write this kind of equation. Similarly, for the next conditional probability, I am saying that try to find out the uh, probability of B event given A is already given over there, okay? So, if I consider that, this will be my another equation. Now, understand one thing, guys. This value and this value are almost same. I can also write it as P A intersection B, P B intersection A. It is both equal. They both are actually equal, okay? So, what I'll do, first of all, I'll just, you know, take this denominator and put it on the left-hand side. Take this denominator and put it on the left-hand side. So, this will basically become P A intersection B is equal to, you can see that it is nothing but probability of a by b it is not a by b a or b okay i can also say that probability of a where we have already given that the probability uh, of b is actually or the b event is actually taken place okay multiplied by probability of b and similarly i can write probability of b intersection a probability of b where a is given and this will basically be my probability of a now, you know that these two are actually equal. So, we will try to equate this and this. So, now I can write probability of A bar B multiplied by probability of B is equal to, right, probability of B bar A multiplied by probability of A, right. Now, if I want to find out what is probability of A bar B, then I can, based on the Bayes theorem, I can basically write it as probability of B bar A multiplied by probability of A divided by probability of B. Now, we need to understand and this is this exactly is the Bayes theorem guys. If you go and try to derive this or see in the internet also, this is actually the Bayes theorem. And remember, this particular value is called as posterior probability. This is called as likelihood, likelihood probability. This is called as, uh, and this also is called as marginal probability. Okay. And probability of A is called as 
prior probability okay now these are the terminologies that are basically used in Bayes theorem okay and we have also seen that how to derive it and remember guys still I have not told you what exactly and how exactly is Bayes theorem getting used in name bias classifier but understand guys this particular theorem will help us to easily identify different different or solve different different classifications understand naive bias completely works on conditional probability considering the Bayes theorem in mind okay this is probably the equation that i need to derive for this particular Bayes theorem now in the next part what we'll be doing is that we'll be discussing about how we are going to use this Bayes theorem in naive bias classifier so in this particular video we understood about conditional probability we understood about independent dependent events we also understood about how we can derive Bayes theorem by using conditional probability in mind so this was all about this particular video i hope you like it please do subscribe the channel if you have not already subscribed i'll see you all in the next video have a great day thank you and all bye bye